Okay. Not fun. Well, was this a game where you had to remain patient on offense because they were, you know, kind of stuffing things early on? Or did you stick with it and stick with it? On this yeah, game? and, and uh, I didn't realize until the stat sheet right here that they had 101 plays and we had 51. You know, obviously our defense is we bending a little bit, but kept competing. And offensively, you know, as uh, you all the covers, I mentioned a couple of times, they can make you look ugly. I mean, it's, they're active up front, all the movements, and you got to stay patient with it. We got a couple, you know, threw a couple new looks there, and then we had a couple big play action passes. I thought that was the key. It still didn't loosen them up, but it got us some, got us some big plays and uh, kept us in the in the game. Was, was this the JJ Taylor game you were you were expecting? Well, yeah, I got to wait, and, and again, they, you know, they did a great job up front. A couple of runs, uh, he did a great job of pressing it and hitting it, and uh, you know, but like I said, I, I don't know if anybody's run that well on him, uh, but we, we did have to stay patient and we had to, to keep plugging at it. And then Cleo, I mean, it wasn't, you know, by any means a mistake free, but boy, he's a competitor. And uh, once he makes a mistake, he's, he recognizes it the next time. What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean to you to be six and two, bowl eligible? I know so much was made about reaching bowl eligibility this year, and you guys have done it eight weeks into the year. What does that mean to you? Well, this this game, we, we talked a little bit about redemption and relevancy, and that was the last thing I said to him in the locker room coming out. We have a chance for redemption for the guys that were there in that debacle from last year, and, and a chance to be relevant. If you beat a top twenty-five team, they were whatever fifteen. You get a chance to make you relevant again for, for a little bit. And that's every player wants to have that. They want to be relevant. And, you know, I know they want to be bowl eligible, but the more you win, the more is at stake, and there's a lot of stake in the next one, that's for sure. Congratulations on the win. Coach, do you just have guys who seem to really make big plays? You take a look at Colin Schooler and Tate and JJ. Do these guys just have a knack for making big plays? I hope so. I think, you know, the nice part about it is they're all young. You know, they're talking about true freshmen and sophomores, second-year players. Uh, <coughs> It's pretty exciting, you know. They've even mentioned a, uh, a little skinny kicker, the 57 yarder. He had made a six, I think, 65 or 70 yarder in practice last week, and he had a little breeze behind him. I was like, 57? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. He made a 65, 70 yarder in practice. So, uh, that was key, you know, give us some momentum going in the locker room. But yeah, the guys just keep battling. You know, we're by no means uh, pretty at times, particularly defensively. You give up this many yards, and but you know, they made them earn them. And they, and they kept competing. Everyone talks about Khalil's running. His passing tonight was very good, on point, a lot of completions. Just your thoughts on his passing? Yeah, he's, he's, he's got a very strong arm, but he's got as good a touch on a deep ball as any quarterback I've had. And uh, and he's a tough guy. He'll take a hit. But, you know, we added a couple of new play action things in there, and, you know, White House did a good job uh, of getting some big plays. You know, we did some uh, bootleg stuff and Jamie Nunley got free a little bit and, and Khalil see it, saw it right away. That's one thing a young Tom, sometimes a young quarterback doesn't see the open guy. Uh, but Khalil's been seeing it pretty quickly. Defense did a decent job of staying over top in the second half. How did you guys adjust to the new quarterback change? You know, they he's uh, he ran a little bit more. He got some first downs or extended some plays with his legs. Uh, but they they uh, they execute so well on their under routes or crossing routes, throwing the ball in the flat, and you know as you get tired or fatigued, you start missing some tackles. That happened a little bit, but again, I think our guys kept playing. You know whether it was getting a turnover or getting a fourth down stop, you know, or particularly a couple down in the red zone, they kept com competing, and that's all you can ask for you guys. You mentioned on Monday that this wasn't a game of revenge. That the revenge didn't really have a factor in this game. Redemption. Redemption is what you said, but I guess how does it feel now to pull off the W and and get the win? Does, was it pretty sweet? How does this yeah, against the other upsets in your You know, career? you wait a long time. When you if you lose a game and you, know, you play your best, whatever, you're still going to be sore about it. But you know, you don't think about it as much. When you lose a game like we did so grossly last year, it makes you want to throw up every time you watch the film. And I had to watch it, you know, a bunch of times in the off season. We had to watch it all this week and. Yeah, it made you sick to your stomach. Until you play, you can't really redeem yourself. So from that point, you know, it's over now, but it certainly was nice. It's a good moment right now. I can tell you that. Rich, the guys were last year. Rich, what does this say about your team? Uh, just overall, heart and all that stuff? Yeah, I, you know, I think, um, you know, our, our, as I've mentioned, I felt good about these guys, you know, since August. I felt good about them when we practiced. And, you know, we had a lot of new players, a senior, we have a small senior class, they're doing a great job of leadership. 
and they got a lot of pride. Um, but you know, you got to work for it. You got to show it. You know, on your in your approach every day. And the staff keep working. The you know, the people that have supported us have stayed supporting with us the whole time. And you know, again, there's still a lot of football left. I mean, what we got four games left, but there's a lot at stake. But our guy, I'm really proud that our guys put themselves in a position now to to be more relevant and to have a lot at stake in the next uh, last month of the season. O-line created a lot of big holes tonight. How do you think they played in comparison to other games? Well, th this was, again, because they're so athletic and active up front, this was, you know, a lot, I had a lot of concerns because we got some big guys and we, we did a few things to try to help them out a little bit, but, you know, they got us. They got us a few times. It was like hit or miss. Um, but we did. We stayed patient. And our, our, our line is a, a very conscientious, intelligent group that understands our system. We got some veterans up there. And, you know, they knew what was happening as soon as it was happening. And then you know, we were able to make a few adjustments as the game went along. Any more questions for Coach? Just one little quick one. You played next week already. I know you haven't had a chance to, to celebrate this one. But Bill Gates had a big game, huge game next week with USC. Looks like the do, um, do we know the game time? No. Uh, just, your probably at night. just your quick thoughts. <laughs> well, Southern Cal is going to be one of the most talented teams in the country every year. You know, everybody knows how many um, five-star, four-star recruits. They're well coached. They play hard, and you know we're going to have to play better. But we know we're capable of that. You know, I have to watch the film, but we're capable of playing better certainly than we did tonight. And and I think our guys know that we got to do that next Saturday. I'll start thinking about that in about 12 hours. So right now I'm enjoying this one. Thank you, Coach.